I said I want to be an actor and she said okay let's put you in Anupam Kher's actor group. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so and one second. Yeah. So Masabas had many 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 failures before she figured out so many that, that fashion and is everyone thinks game. I'm an overnight success yeah. but I'm wow. not. Is she here yet? Okay, now I'm panicking. Oh, you outdid me. Big is always better. <laughs> I'm hot. <laughs> 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 Listen, I'm not playing this game. <laughs> Your fashion god has just fallen off. <laughs> His bum is that good. <laughs> scuba diving. You want to go scuba diving? Okay, Sitting there going. Makana, just stop talking. Uh -huh. Now you're embarrassing. Go, Gopi. Stop it, Gopi. Welcome to Tweak Thank and you. we have to tell you that you are the youngest icon we've had so far. Wow. Yeah. Well, fortunately, I'm yeah, you <laughs> should be because yeah. fortunately or unfortunately becoming an icon, you need a huge body of work and that yeah. takes a few decades. Mm -hmm. But you have done it somehow. I'm not quite sure. I hope so. I hope so. And you've been very vocal about your life. You had a TV yeah. show based on your life. Yeah. <laughs> and when I saw that, what really struck me was there was this constant juxtaposition between the grown-up Masaba and hmm. the kid. Yes, yes, yes. My and favorite kid, part. Yes, and the kid was a driving force. So, hmm. is she really your driving force, this little girl? You know, I'll tell you the backstory to that. So, that was never meant to be a part of the show. And I remember I was going to therapy and my therapist said to me, please forgive the younger you. And she said, please always keep that child in you alive. Forgive her. Don't be so harsh to her. And it was something that kept coming up in my sessions. And I was just like, how, how strange, you know? And then I told the writers, I said, why not have this mini Masaba hmm. who constantly is like this voice in my head and she's also there and comes and holds my hand in moments where I can't cope with something. So I just found that such a great thing because I feel like all of us women, somewhere the child in us is alive, but we kind of suppress that child because we're like, no, we've grown up now, we're adults and there's responsibility and then there's so much to do. But there's no reason to suppress that child. And sometimes you have to take life through the lens of a kid. That's how. I can't suppress her. There's a little fat girl. It doesn't matter what size I'm from. <laughs> this little fat 11 year old running around in my head, yeah. giving me directions. And yeah. she's also my moral guide. Yeah. Is your child your moral guide? The mini Masaba? Absolutely. I think keep that little playfulness alive and sort of be a little bit vulnerable. I like that. I like being a bit naive. I like, you know, trusting people, taking their word for what it is. So I always keep that alive. And I think all, all of us should, in my opinion. When you were growing up, mm -hmm. Was this child, this mini Masaba, was she naive and what was her life like when she was growing up? I lived a very isolated life as a child. I don't think that I ever, I didn't make too many friends. You know, even in school, I was kind of quiet. I played a lot of sport. I think that was escapism at some level because I was just like, I was so, I went to Jamnabai Narsi, right? And the thing is, at the end of the day, you have all these kids who've come from these these Gujarati families and I Be was careful like... careful what you say about Gujarati families, they're kind of ruling every <laughs> aspect ruling every... of India right now. <laughs> That's true. And I mean, a lot of my friends were from these families, but the fact is that I was this young kid with an afro. Yeah. And they all would come close to me and be like, can she speak Hindi? Let's hear what she sounds like. So I went into a little corner. So you went to sports. I mean, that's mm -hmm. also genetics. And I read yeah. that you loved tennis and you were going to be a tennis player. Yeah. And what happened then? I was just too angry. <laughs> I was just too angry a tennis player. And it just went into no control of my emotions whatsoever. Which is why today when I look at these tennis stars and look at Federer and I look at all these guys, they have this calm, composed mindset. And I remember how important it was back then to have that as well. But I just, I would be breaking rackets and badly behaved. I had the best dresses though. I had the best tennis outfits and looks because my dad would bring me everything from London at the time. Why can't I cope with this this ball that I can't reach? You know what I mean? It was like that. Mental weakness, I think that's the first sign that I felt where I couldn't come back from defeat as a kid. But your father must have encouraged you. Did he have dreams that you would become a sports person? And was that why you were getting all these tennis dresses? Absolutely. I mean, I think it was his dream come <laughs> true to have me become a tennis star. And I was playing. I was. I think I was number three in Maharashtra. That much I did with my wow, anger that's... issues. <laughs> yeah, I did that much. But uh, no more than that. In my head, I couldn't talk myself out of. And that's what playing a sport like tennis is about, right? It's sport you play in isolation. 
you have to talk yourself out of every situation every match point everything that you didn't do on that court and i couldn't but do that's it. life right you have that's to talk life. yourself out of every failure every setback yeah, and yeah, also yeah. not sit back after any wins yeah yeah it's, yeah i mean you're, you're talking about tennis i'm saying life is ludo you keep playing you get bit by the snake you slide down yeah, you yeah, climb up the ladder yeah. and that's it yeah. the game only ends when you die because exactly <laughs> yeah up and down. i think that's the first time i said i have to become tougher mentally because physically i was the strongest kid out there i mm. had the build right thanks to my genetics i was just strong i could reach the ball i could be really quick on court so i think my whole life since then has been how do i become tough mentally mm. yeah that's that's a long journey that's I, a long and journey it's yeah. a lifelong journey yeah yeah actually yeah when you grew up you grew up with these famous parents and i know people ask me the same thing what was it like growing up with famous parents and i always say well i don't know any different so yeah. how can i answer yeah. that but what i did feel by the time i was a teenager and i kept feeling that you know i resented the fact that i'm in their shadow hmm. and it's only now that i realize i was never in their shadow i was under their shade and yes. it kind of took me so many years and especially after i had a child and mm. then he doesn't want us to help him with anything he wants to do it all on his own wow. and then you realize that okay i was this person once mm. and i didn't appreciate it did you feel that you were in their shadow or did you want to break out of that never i really was very grateful that i had what i had everyone tells me till today oh you've become what you've become because of your mom and your dad someone apparently told uh, uh, a friend once that what what's she got to do her dad's just left her like hundreds of crores i said no there's no hundreds of crores <laughs> they're being built but i'm building that myself but i've never felt that that i that i was uh, that it was a negative i thought that was a positive always because i had such a great benchmark I had uh, two examples in my house of how great you can be you know and I always saw it like that yeah well yeah. it took me a lot of years long time <laughs> to see that yeah people talk about being raised by a single parent yeah and uh, well maybe it's not ideal but what they never say is that there are really some advantages of being raised by a mother i was raised you know largely by my mother and mm -hmm. i would tell you that um, for the longest time i didn't even know patriarchy mm -hmm. and the patriarchal system existed because i wasn't in the system yeah so what do you think are the advantages of being raised by a single mom well i think it's a softer approach to life in some sense i think you're sure you're hard around the edges but uh, you go through life a little softer when you're raised by a single woman and i think women just do that you know if you have a woman as a boss you'll see that if you have a woman who's in a leadership position anywhere uh, you'll see that there's a softness that she brings to whatever she touches and i thought that that was what happened with me the best part is that you also kind of learn to laugh at yourself my mother had the best sense of humor when it came to herself and every situation that she was in she was just laughing through it so i think it can save your life having a sense of humor can save your life i am living yes, proof you're of living that. proof of that yourself you know but it's uh, better to laugh at yeah. yourself than wait for the world to laugh at you absolutely and it's also call yourself uh, yeah, out therapeutic yeah absolutely way. i think lastly i would say that you learn and this is a cliche i know but the independence you see it right there's one thing to be told that be independent and there's one thing to see a living example of it in your house and see them living through it every day my mother had many options to get married you know when i was growing up and find a partner etc etc but she chose for a long period of time to just be by herself because she said no my daughter can't have some man just enter her life right now until mm. she finally did get married but um and that was also a very soft sort of introduction that i had to my stepfather it was very nicely done you know i think that independence the softness that you bring to everything that you do and i think we have the ability to take on anything by ourselves if you're yeah. raised by a single mom you really do you can There's yeah a certain resilience and there is yeah which and you don't mm. really talk about feminism i don't remember the word feminism ever being used in the household but mm. it was there it was in yeah. every action yeah. there and yeah. and there was no one else to do it anyway so yeah Yeah. I grew up with the notion that and I think a lot of drive and ambition comes from that place. Yes. I feel that if maybe if my parents were together would I really want to constantly keep working yeah. and you know yeah. doing something with the other yeah. I probably wouldn't. No, absolutely and you know I learned something I I rather this came upon me I think I was doing uh, 
some talk the other day or something and someone said to me what did all those challenges that you faced because there was all that trouble that i had getting admission in school like when i was growing up because there was mm. no uh, they weren't married my yeah. mom and dad and they were like so many you know problems that came your way etc and i said you know i actually look at everything as a gift i do everything every road block everything that went wrong i look at it as a gift because if i didn't get that gift i would not be who i am today i completely so, agree yeah. i mean i yeah. always say that at that time what you think is the worst thing that's ever happened to you yeah. you look back and say that was amazing i would yeah. never be this person if yeah. it wasn't for having to deal with that totally. setback totally and you know i looked at other kids and i looked at them coming from these amazing families i see that you know the the, the yeah. stereotypical you have the mom and the dad and they all sit and eat dinner together and then there's a dog and then these windows and this lovely you know <laughs> clean clean sheets and all of that and i keep thinking that but they were all miserable because either of the parents either were not loyal or thing or the other going on or there was something that that was not transparent you know with these kids and they were always sort of kept in the shadows about who the parents are what they're doing I mean both situations have their advantages and they also y- you know having a partner is uh, very helpful when you have yeah. children yeah I mean last night my you daughter need, had fever yeah, yeah. and I told my husband you take care of her because I'm shooting all day hmm. and he has a day off yeah so there are certain things which Absolutely. then the moms have to double up they have to be mom dad best friend aunt everything, everything. together and my mother struggled with that because yeah. she was working Yeah. full time and she was raising me and my nana ji was actually the father figure in the house at the time because mm. he my mom said please come from delhi take care because i have to be out of the house and i can't mm. leave her with uh with a nanny all the time so he he played that role in my life but she still had to because yeah. the thing is i wanted her time both as mom and dad yeah. so that could be challenging so as a teenager you also started doing some singing and dancing yeah. which just paid like off <laughs> it just paid off now and yes. i'm not going to say why cuz okay. it's still sort of all wrapped up yeah uh and i'm not even supposed to know this i just know this accidentally okay. anyway mm-hmm. we won't talk about that but you wanted to sing and dance and you yes. went to london to yeah. learn and then what happened well that was my beyonce wanna be beyonce phase as i call it there was a wanna be serena <laughs> williams phase which was the tennis and then there was a wanna be beyonce phase and uh, i went to london uh, to this vocal training school i kid you not i was so bad i was the worst i was besura to another level and you know my mother was like she's not one of those that beta very good you know everything you're doing very good no she said you're so bad she's like you're just so bad please go learn how to sing and i went to london i studied there for 6 months was terribly homesick and i just wanted to come back and live in juhu <laughs> with my mom and be protected and i uh, i came back and that was the end of that i was miserable i didn't enjoy a minute of it because i realized how much hard work it is i didn't want to learn how to play an instrument and train my vocal cords and not have ice and all that and i was just a young kid trying to have a good time in london you know but i came back and that's when sndt happened but before that there was a short phase where i said i will become an actor and my mom said no because so you tried both their professions you wanted to become a sports person everything. like your dad yeah and yeah. an actress like your mom yeah yeah because i was in my head you know you think oh the legacy has to move on and has to carry forward but what legacy i mean if you're bad at something you don't want to keep going right and then i i said i want to be an actor and she said okay let's put you in anupam khair's actor <laughs> okay <laughs> so and, one second yeah. so masabas had Many, 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 many failures before she figured out. So many. That, that fashion. And everyone thinks I'm an overnight success, yeah. but I'm well, not. Okay. I've had so many, so many. Fa- but even before that phase, before the between the tennis and the singing, there was Shamak Davar, where I was a backup dancer and I would dance at film fair and uh, I watched Commonwealth Games and I went as part of 800 people to Australia to perform and whatnot. And it was the best time of my life because I did that too. and um, then i said i want to act and she said listen this i'm not going to let you do because i just think that you're not a conventionally indian face mm-hmm. and you'll get put in a box in this industry so why do you want to go down that road and i i said okay cool i hear so you so whatever she said you accepted it I you accepted didn't argue it. you didn't sort of say this is no. my ambition because everything that i had said up until then she accepted and i knew she wasn't being unfair she was just being practical and protective of me so i knew that this is coming from a genuine place and uh, she said do something that 
you can apply your brain to till the end of your life. She said you can design till the end of your life. So please do that. My gosh, my mother said the complete opposite, opposite thing. <laughs> she said, do the movies now because you can do this now and you can do whatever else you want till the end of your life. Wow, and you were miserable. I was. Mi- I didn't want to. So she, and she was. And she told me the opposite. She said, "You look the part. You'll manage. Just yeah. go." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, absolutely the opposite. Mm. Though I feel that their lives are similar in certain yeah, aspects, yeah, where yeah. you know they're these fine actresses mm-hmm. who kind of struck out on their own. Yeah. But yeah, I think the way they raised their children was <laughs> significantly different. No, she was like, "Ye kya itni badi na ki sab nahi chalne wala hai. Ab ye baal bhi nahi chalenge yahan pe." So I said, "Okay, fine." And next door was SNDT University, and she said, "Go, the admissions are open." There was a huge board that said admissions open, and I think it was a sign from the universe. Well, now in hindsight, and I went in there. Nobody else has through. called any billboard outside SNDT a sign from the universe except you, except me. Yes, that says admissions open. <laughs> um, and so, literally, we took a U-turn, went straight, drove straight into SNDT, and it was the day that you could file for. the entrance mm-hmm. exam and uh, they said yeah, yeah yeah let's do it let's let's put her in for the entrance exam i said okay sure let's do it and i got through i was miserable two and a half years i was miserable you didn't like fashion you were not interested no, in no i fashion. liked fashion but they made us do everything but fashion crochet knitting and you, literally i mean would you and me have ever put like a needle and said chalo kuch phat gaya hai we will now you know <laughs> You are talking to the wrong person. You are talking to the wrong. Me no, too. I love embroidery. You are talking to the wrong person. Oh and God. I like to knit and crochet. Oh God. Yeah, no, my no, grandmother no. taught me all of this, and I love it. Oh gosh, I'm the opposite. I used to knit on the set, and my spot boy would come and tell me, "Ki please, ye ab yahan pe nahi karo. Sab log bolenge ki aap aunty ho." Aunty ho. <laughs> so I would take my knitting and go in the gosh, van. What I just you? could not. I loved it. Oh no, okay. I just could not. If something was gone, I was like, "Please, leke jao tailor ke paas. <laughs> Kuch kar do uska." You know that way. So it's good now that you have an entire business full of tailors. You Absolutely. can keep sending your things. <laughs> Absolutely. But when I went into the illustration class and the mm. history of fashion and history of costume class i flourished but of course i didn't complete my course because mm. halfway well rather i would say 80% of the course was done and uh, i started my own label and i said i'm going to apply to fashion week mm. as part of the gen next program and i and i got through that's amazing yeah and then you started your label I started my label didn't look back we started from our little apartment mom and i mm. she was the accountant and i was the creative person and she would also come in and do like some sari borders and this and that and design mm-hmm. something here and there and that's from then on was non stop well, that's such a wonderful story and yeah. now you have this empire you've got jewelry you've got makeup yes, I, i don't know what yes. else what else is next what else are you going to conquer i really want to do home okay i really 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 enjoy home and i just did my own home up and i think that's definitely the next step for me but before that i want to enjoy what i've done i'm very very impatient as a person and i've noticed that sometimes you have to stop and just take stock of what you've done and enjoy it so i'm doing that right that's now. a very big lesson because yeah very often if you are a driven person you reach a point which mm. you thought was somewhere in the future yeah. and now you're standing there and then you're looking at the next goal post yeah, yeah, yeah. and that's it and you go on like that yeah and someone told me he said you know why do you always have a new challenge sit mm. back and taken the view as they say so i'm doing that right now but uh, i'm not i can say no, that it's There's not possible no, it's not so possible. you take you can just do that for 5 minutes and then you're like okay fine this is like, boring now you have to board. go on yeah exactly yeah, yeah yeah i agree with that yeah. what are the tips you would tell women who want to run their own businesses what are what are some of the things that you've learned the hard way and what you'd like to tell women i think it's it's true when you're financially independent nothing and no one can come in your way I really believe that because the thing is you're mentally calmer because you're the kind of master of your own destiny you're the master of what you want to create and I think I saw that with my mom you know she wasn't asking for money and asking for favors or getting things done she was just the master of her own destiny she had her money she spent it the way she liked she, no questions asked nothing that definitely the second is I would say that there's no correct age to start over 
you know i've seen falguni nair do it i've seen mm. so many people do it you know you've had babies i'm mean, you're doing this now you're doing a course uh, yourself and i feel like at no age can you the learning never stops this generation especially you know we we just want everything but at the same time we're anxious about wanting everything if you know what i mean you know the the idea is that oh i had a baby at 31 somebody else is 38 and she's probably not being able to have a baby and you put all this unnecessary pressure on this person but maybe that person isn't there in their life at the moment mm. and then you have someone who got married at 25 and already has grown up kids mm. i think pick the pace that works for you in life mm. there's no rule book you know what what works for you what what privileges you might have what i might have a very different Like for me I could dabble with fashion for the first 5 years without making a penny because I had the financial mm. support. I wasn't putting food on my table for for my mother and my nana ji. But at the same time I'm not going to go out and tell some woman that take risks and you know for 5 years just try this that passion. No. Passion has to be practical after a point. It has to be because she might be the the sole breadwinner for the whole family. And then what? And was your mom yeah. good with finances? Did she look after I mean has For the best. fact that she's a Gupta, she was not. Let me tell you <laughs> that my whole her side of the family are all CAs. Okay, and she is just so average with money, but. at my level she, she could managed. do it but it was the blind leading the blind but right. you all did okay come on look we at where you okay. are we did okay and we got the right people to help us yeah and i think that's another thing i would say to women don't think that asking for help is beneath you no matter how big you are how smart you are there's always someone smarter and i do that i hire i i consciously hire people smarter than me yeah you have to do that otherwise there's no growth i saw an interview where your mom was <laughs> Okay, we are big fans of your mama. Oh God! By the okay. way, we we also have a hashtag: do what Nina G would do. Yes, I've There's seen some, it. Yeah, so we are big fans. I saw an interview where she said that um, love doesn't have anything to do with marriage. It's lust first, and then it changes to a companionship. Hmm. Yeah, which is sort of true. By yeah. the time you get to my age, you kind of figure yeah. that bit out. Yeah. Do you believe that? Hundred percent. So it's lust and then companionship. Yeah. There's no such yeah. thing as love. I mean. It's there in that first. Oh, I'm going on a date, and I'm going to put on my dress, and I've been married twice, so I can I can assure you, there's nothing like yeah, love. Yeah, you love, have love. more experience. In I that. I do have a lot more experience. There is there is the the I would say the butterflies. Let's just call them butterflies. But that's lust. You can't call that love now. Well, butterflies, you can't yeah, say. Yeah, I mean, but I think what I like. that she said more was that the only unconditional love is that from a between a parent and the kids But that's that's, true. that's absolutely true that is who true. can refute that you yeah yeah but i don't think that i think there's more lust and then it just becomes comfort habit companionship in mm-hmm. that order what are the lessons you learned from your first marriage hmm. which you have taken okay and one more thing i saw your mom yes. saying that she was very upset when you're separated because she didn't she was like devastated. your husband yeah she was devastated nobody was more devastated than my mother and she was trying very hard to not be devastated openly but she was devastated and i was like what's happening why are you devastated i was 28 when i got divorced so she was like are isno to chalu bhi kiya khatam bhi ho gaya do saal hue hain kuch time nahi bitaya you know what i mean that kind of thing so yeah but isn't it like strange that the women who have not led these conventional lives are then giving you advice about how to lead a conventional life because they want it for you everything exactly. that they have not seen yeah they will tell you like i'll tell my mom about some work achievement and she'll be like you know i came to house the other day and none of your dishes are matching i'm like how do you care about this exactly. today yeah 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 no so this uh, i must tell you that my mother i wanted to live in with my ex husband before getting married and she said no and she said this is not happening i have made this mistake and you're not making this mistake just get married if you're sure about it get married so literally she she packed my things and sent them over the day i was that the court marriage was done she was like get out i'm It's telling done. you our mothers have done the opposite because we've been in same situations yeah. with different advice when my husband said he wants to marry me my mother said nothing doing you'll live together for 2 years if you wow. make it you'll get married that makes sense Okay, because she said I've been married. I've seen what it's like. Your mother had not been married, so she said to the opposite. So they, I mean, all moms do it, right? What yeah. else? You'll yeah. have kids. You'll yeah. be able to only give them that knowledge which hmm. you have. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. It would absolutely. Just... And I think she saw it as, 
oh you know when when people are not married they have the option to to leave very easily i said but nowadays they have the option to leave anyway <laughs> they've left before they have even said that they've left sometimes you see you know they've checked out they've left the building but no she was very very conservative in that that phase of my life because i think she didn't want me to go through what she went through um, but then did yeah. you tell her that mom i was telling you we should live together and try and you said get married and look what happened i think she told me that she said you know it, i think it was my mistake and i think mm-hmm. i should have let you just do what you were doing and live together and you would have figured things out yourself mm-hmm. and i think she said i should have just nudged you a bit and focused a little bit on you and she said i was a bad mother she went into that dramatic <laughs> part of an actress's mother's life <laughs> that's it and you know honestly i'll tell you a twinkle i got married because of peer pressure there was nothing else really how yeah. old were you i was 26 so what peer pressure 26 that thing that everybody was getting married gosh all my not just friends but like people that were around me they were all getting married they were married by 25 mm. and i said damn i'm going to be left behind so the first thing that i saw was okay this is good this fits mm. i like this i just went straight into it and you're married again i'm married again because you are the survivor you try a couple of things works out doesn't work out yes next yes. project <laughs> so now you're at your next project yeah what have you taken from the past and you're going to make sure that that does not happen again in this one i think open communication um just just that phones aside nobody else in the room just having conversations about where the other person is at in their life in their head i think that's very important we don't do it these days because we think we know everything about someone because you're following them on social mm-hmm. media or your you know oh yeah we're fine we we go to bed every night and it's sweet and it's happy mm-hmm. and nothing's wrong but i think it's open communication as to what you're feeling what i'm feeling where we're at in this phase of our lives i think that's something i'll definitely take away and i i did date this one for 3 years good one <laughs> that was a smart thing i would say please date people for a long period of time definitely that and i think what i've noticed is and i don't know if this applies to women in general but women have to have a lot of respect for their partner more than the love more than the attraction you have to have just the utmost respect for your partner i would say it's yeah. uh, there's another criteria yes they should worship the ground you walk on that too that is the main criteria <laughs> that that too me. that too then i'll respect you and i'll i'll do all of that but first you have to and i do sure. and i do believe that uh, you know it's nicer when the man is more in love with the woman it's always nicer somehow it works so you have managed to build an empire act which is what you wanted to do as a child yeah. married everything indian women want it all and you seem to have it all <laughs> how yeah. are you managing all this how are you juggling all these balls and we don't any salacious answers okay yeah, i have a great 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 fear of being mediocre and i like being a multi hyphenate i know that a lot of people would say to me you know but you're just losing what your core is who are you you're losing that and you know you should be known for one thing be great at one thing i like being a jack of all trades i really enjoy it and i think i'm doing each one pretty well and i always say that when we wake up every morning we're kind of just waking up and prepping for some kind of failure right mm. in some way something's not going to work that day it's going to be a store that shut down or some employee that you really train is gone tomorrow you know stuff like that so i'm just saying you're always prepping for failure so why not prep in the best way possible and prep mm. by doing many things So I like it. I like wearing many hats and uh, I want to I want to do more. I want to write a book which I will get to. I think it's going to be very very thin right now. So I'll wait to <laughs> gather some more experiences and then write it. But I I intend to do a lot more because I think I have a lot that I can offer. Well, that's wonderful. Yeah. Thank you so much Thank for you. being here. It's Thank wonderful. You. Thank you. And I hope you inspire more and more young girls who will now look up to you and say <laughs> we want to be like Masaba.